My glory and the lifter of my head, my glory and the lifter of my head. For thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. My glory and the lifter of my head, my glory and the lifter of my head. For thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. <clears throat> I cried unto the Lord with my voice, Miss Yolinda. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. Yes, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. And he heard me out of his holy hill. My glory and the lifter of my head. My glory and the lifter of my head. For thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. Yes, the lifter of your head, Miss Yolinda, Miss Connie, Miss Sharon. On this new year, on this third day of January, glory to God, and that little song, we will say, we will speak it out from Psalm 3, and it is verses 3 and 4, 3, 3 and 4, and so, hallelujah, our brother Mel has joined us, praise God, he is the lifter of our heads, that we might read our Bible out loud every day. Every day, new every morning, are his mercies great is his faithfulness. Oh, you won't find better words than that. Nobody else will do that for you but him. Nobody else. We all let people down, but he will not let you down. And so also lifted up just a bit with some coffee and some cinnamon. Let us look at Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. And Miss Kathy has joined us. And I urge you, <clears throat> I urge you to enjoy her beautiful graphics, to tune in. She has scrolled and looked and sought and brought forth something very lovely that just works hand in hand with reading it out loud. I am, I am so grateful for my sister Kathy, who's just stuck right in there with me through thick and thin. Well, as you can see, I'm back in my little kitchen in front of my cabinet. My angel never left for one minute. And so we are ready to read the Word of God. The Word of God, the powerful creative word of God brought just for you, saved and preserved just for us in this generation. Genesis 5, this is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female. Now that's simple enough, isn't it? Just two, male and female, not to be mixed up, not to be spoken of as something new and different. No, no, we're still born, either a male or a female. And he blessed them and he called them mankind in the day they were created and Adam lived 130 years, and begot a son in his own likeness after his image, and he named him 
Set. After he begot Set, the days of Adam continued on for 800 years. How about that? And he had sons and daughters. So all the days that Adam lived were 930 years. And he died. Seth lived 105 years and begot Enosh. After he begot Enosh, Seth lived 807 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. Oh, they lived to a great old age, didn't they? Enosh lived 90 years and begot Canaan. After he begot Canaan, Enosh lived 815 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enosh were 905 years. And he died. Canaan lived 70 years and begot Mahalalel. After he begot Mahalalel, Canaan lived 840 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Canaan were 910 years. And he died. Mahalalel lived 65 years and begot Jared. After he begot Jared, Mahalalel lived 830 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years, and he died. Jared lived 162 years and begot Enoch. After he begot Enoch, Jared, Yared, lived 800 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Yared were 962 years, and he died. <clears throat> Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years. Oh my, and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And e now here's a beautiful sentence. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. There's no death recorded. Matter of fact, somebody said, where's Enoch? I don't know. Have you seen him? No. Well, I saw him a few days ago. Well, where is he? Well, let's look. And he was not found, for God took him. Methuselah lived 187 years and begot Lamech. After he begot Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. Lamech lived 182 years and had a son, and he called his name Noah, saying, This one will comfort us concerning our work. And that's the meaning of Noah's name, comfort. Concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. After he begot Noah, Lamech lived 595 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Lamech were 777 years, and he died. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Yepeth. And we move along to chapter 6 of Bereshit, Genesis. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Here we've got, here we've got sin coming out of the eyes. 
that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful. And they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. These were not good sons. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. We ought to believe for that, I think. We ought to look forward to that. This cup, the man that quoted this, lived just shy of a hundred. He missed the party, but the party went on because we knew where he was. All right, my spirit shall not strive with man forever. That's good for us to realize. For he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. And then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent on, of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry. He was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Wow! We would like to strive for that kind of perfection, wouldn't we? Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Yepheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch, protecting it from the water. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. It's width 50 cubits and it's height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark, and you shall finish it to a cubit from above, and set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. And behold, I myself am bringing floodwaters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Ooh. Those, that was a sad announcement, wasn't it? Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, Noah, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your son's wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark 
to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. And Morty Miss Donna and Miss Maria. Of the birds after their kind, of animals after their kind, and of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind. Two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. So, hallelujah for that. Noah didn't have to go out and hunt them all down. It says, two will come. And you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. And thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him, so he did. Oh, he was obedient. What a great example for you and me. Obedience. All right, we move right along to the seventh chapter of Genesis, Bereshit. And then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Such an encouragement. God was proclaiming that all the rest were sinful enough that he was done. He was going to destroy everybody else and every living creature. But he saved Noah. And he will save you and me when we walk with him and obey him. You shall take with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and his female, two each of animals that are unclean, a male and his female, also seven each of birds of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive on the face of all the earth. So what a great plan. God's going to preserve every species that he made, but he's going to start over, isn't he? He's going to bring a flood and just wipe everything else out. For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. And Noah did, according to all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the water, floodwaters were on the earth. <clears throat> and have you noticed that the mention of the years that they live has gotten shorter than when we started out with Adam? So Noah, with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives, went into the ark because of the waters of the flood, of clean animals, of animals that are unclean, of birds, and of everything that creeps on the earth. Two by two, they went into the ark to Noah, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were on the earth. Right on time, exactly what God spoke he's going to do. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. And the rain was on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On the very same day, Noah and Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Yepeth, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them entered the ark. They and every beast after its kind, all cattle after their kind, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind, every bird of every sort. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, of all flesh in which is the breath of life. So those that entered 
male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut the door. Now the flood was on the earth 40 days. The waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth, and all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. I'm sure people scrambled to go higher and higher and higher. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the panic, the fear? And finally, they tried to swim, I'm sure. And finally, they all died. Let that be a great lesson to us. The waters prevailed 15 cubits upward, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every man. All in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life. All that was on the dry land died. So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only, only. Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. Wow. Can you imagine how they felt? I would be praising God, I'll tell you that. And the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. 150 days. Wow. There you have it, y'all. The Old Testament true word of God, the history, his story preserved for us. We move right along to the New Covenant, the New Testament, to Matthew, Matthew, Matayahu, or I might not have said that right. Matthew chapter 3, picking up with verse 7. Matthew 3, 7. But when John the Baptist saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers! Some welcome, huh? Brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And do not think to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the ax is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not even worthy to carry or unfasten, some Bibles say. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Have you been baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire? You can. And you must be. You must be to have his power and his direction to live out these fearsome days. Please, please seek him. Seek him. 
He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And are you coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. That's the reason. To fulfill all righteousness. And then he allowed him. And when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. We move along to chapter 4 of Matthew. And then Jesus was led up by the Spirit. Now he's filled with the Spirit and he will be led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He came for this purpose. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, which is what we need to be doing. Afterward, he was hungry. Afterward, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, you ready for his words? If you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And that is being spoken in line with Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 13. And then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you. And, written, in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Psalm 91, verses 11 and 12. And Jesus said to him, It is written, Again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 6, 16. And again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you worship. Deuteronomy six thirteen, And then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Wow. How about that confrontation? 
We know who the winner is, don't we? All right, we move right along, y'all, to Psalm, uh, Psalm 3. Psalm 3, a Psalm of David, when he fled from Absalom, his son. Oh, what a terrible time that was for David. Imagine fleeing from your son. Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. Selah. Stop. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. My glory and the lifter of my head. For thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. Selah. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people. That's a good scripture for you and I to put in our heart and keep at the surface of our understanding. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. Selah. <clears throat> wow. Powerful, powerful psalm. We move right along and finish up today's reading with Proverbs, and we're still in chapter 1, and we are up to verse 10. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10 through 19. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. Do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait to shed blood. Let us lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Oh, yes. We have abortion clinics set up for that, don't we? Let us swallow them alive like Sheol and whole like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in your lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, but they lie and wait for their own blood. They lurk secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. Greedy. Ah. Evil billionaire people who are only spending their way to hell unless they repent. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its owners. They don't realize, do they? So we need to be in prayer for them. Prayer. Prayer. That mighty weapon of war. Let's use some. Oh, Father God. 
oh, Father God, high and lifted up on your throne, Jesus, our precious Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, the Mashiach, seated right there at Father's right hand. Holy Ghost being sent out everywhere, all across the earth, the universe, the heavens, doing the bidding of you, Father God. What a beautiful trinity working together. Our mighty, mighty God, who we worship alone. And we worship you, Lord, through your son, Jesus, who purchased salvation and healing for us. And we cry out to you on this day, Lord. We cry out to you. We cry out for peace in Yerushalayim. We cry out for peace in Israel. Your peace, the strong, bonding peace that is unlike any other earthly peace. It's lasting. Father God, we cry out to you today for the salvation of the land of America. We cry out to you today for the protection, for the anointing upon President Donald John Trump and Vice President Mike Pence. Father God, cause them to work together on your will, cause them to know and to agree and to see and to feel and to know in their spirits your will and cause them to refuse all other counsel. Cause them to grasp a hold of your counsel. Cause them, Lord, to rise up at this time, to rise up, to have truth in their hands, in their mouths, in their minds, in their hearts. Truth, your truth. Mankind can't do what's happening today. It needs to come from you, precious Lord. We cry out to you. We lift up holy hands to you. We come to you, Lord. And we say, Lord, have your way. Have your perfect, perfect way. Lord, we are trusting you to be the judge, all capital letters, the judge, that what you say happens, what you do happens, and that you give, her a, you give us a discerning spirit, a discerning spirit to know right from wrong, to know holiness from wickedness, to walk with you, holy before you, striving, striving to know you, striving to love you, striving to understand your word and your ways, casting aside everything that would be in our way and aligning our lives with the things that are important to you, casting aside people, and places and things that interfere. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us. Help us this day. Help us when we're ill to seek you. You have already purchased healing for us. Help us, Lord, to cry out to you. It's your desire to heal us. Don't let us be wishy-washy. Don't let our faith be let down with confusion, with voices, with suggestions. But let us look to you with a pure heart and a single mind, looking up to you. Father God, let the church arise for this occasion let the church arise and proclaim you and proclaim that we belong to you, that this country is yours. It's yours. You brought righteous people and they suffered and they gave their lives 
to establish a beautiful constitution. They couldn't even do it. They got all worn out. And they said, let's just go home. They went home and they prayed. And they let some time pass. And they came back. And you laid it right out for them. Lord, help us to know and discern your ways, your will. Help us to walk. Help us to walk firmer. Help us to walk higher. Help us to be looking up. Help us to desire holiness, righteousness. Help us not to care who, who laughs at us or who speaks against us. We will pray for them. And if they don't listen, they will suffer like we read in Genesis. You wiped out the whole earth. And you said it will happen one more time with fire. Lord, help us to be filled with your fire, your Holy Spirit. Help us to pray for leaders everywhere. Help us, Lord, to pray powerful words that aren't ours, but they're yours. And we will give you all the praise. We will give you all the glory. Yes, Lord, we will give you all the glory. We will give you all our praise. We will look, Lord, for all your ways. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Yes, we love you, Lord. <laughs>